Good morning. Okay. Welcome to Life in Christ Lutheran Church. The peace of the Lord be with you. As we come together to worship this morning, it is good for us to take a few moments to reflect on the many ways our Lord shows us the heart of God, guiding us as we live and grow in Christ, encourage and reach others. We are blessed to ask anything in Jesus' name, and he will answer according to what is best for us, to his glory. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love, a love that burns with unquenchable fire to serve you and you alone. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, to our deaf friends and good morning to you who are joining us online this morning. Welcome to Life in Christ Lutheran Church as we continue in the season of Easter. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter this week. Uh, and I'm kind of excited. Uh, we're actually doing a divine service too um, out of the hymnal, uh, although everything's going to be projected. So if you don't want to hold the hymnal, that's okay. Uh, maybe some of you even know it by heart. Um, uh, this is something that I haven't been able to do for like, well, over three years now. Uh, because the last time I did it was before COVID. So this is, this is, a, this is a treat. Um, uh, welcome to Life in Christ. Uh, if you haven't already done so, there's a white card like this in the seat back in front of you. Please take a moment and, and fill that out. Uh, and we can, uh, if, if you don't mind, place it in the tray or one of the trays, there's three of them, uh, toward the back of the sanctuary before you leave this morning. <clears throat> As we gather for worship, we continue to focus our attention on Jesus' resurrection. And, and we see that Jesus is the stone that was rejected by the religious leaders. He was crucified and killed by them, yet God raised Jesus from the dead, making him the cornerstone the foundational stone on which uh, all of the other stones in the building are aligned and built. And as we build upon the foundation and cornerstone of Jesus, we are conformed and aligned to him and able to trust him 
for he is the unchanging God we worship in a creation that's otherwise full of change. And so let's begin our worship this morning uh, with our opening hymn at the Lamb's High Feast we sing. Let's rise for that. Friends in Christ, God has called us to worship this morning, and so we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are, by nature, sinful and unclean. For we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends in Christ, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is our cornerstone. In him we are a newborn, chosen, priestly people. We are called to proclaim his excellencies. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is 
is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promised, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. We continue with our first reading. Good morning. Today the first reading is from Acts uh, chapter 6 and 7, various verses. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freed men, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and the Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. 
You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. <coughs> now when they heard these things, they were enraged and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants long for, the, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as the spiritual house, as, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling block a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now out of honor for Jesus, who is the Christ, we rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also, and you know the way to where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, 
will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The congregation, please be seated. We continue with our sermon hymn, Christ Be My Leader. I have to say, I'm so glad you guys are singing today. <laughs> Doesn't it feel good to sing the liturgy? It's okay if you don't like to sing. I forgive you. I'm just teasing. I really do b believe, though, as the church has sung the liturgy throughout the ages, there is such power in song such power in song. It helps us to focus. It brings a sense of emotion into our worship that needs to be there. There's an, a deeper connection. I truly believe there's a deeper connection in song. Um, there's good connection in words, don't get me wrong, but I think it's even deeper in song. So thank you for singing. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for indeed you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things that's beautiful about song is that it's a way to express our trust. And in our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus opens up with a simple imperative, and an imperative is a do this, right? Do this. That's imperative. His simple imperative is one word, trust. 
It's how we started our worship this morning as we greeted, telling uh, the people around us one way that, that God has uh, told us to trust or one thing that we have had to trust in God for this week. I know it's translated as the word believe in our gospel lesson, but what our Lord is really getting at when he makes his address is not simply to believe that there is a God out there somewhere, or simply to believe that this God had a kid named Jesus. We are called to do something greater than simply believe. We are called to trust. We're called to trust when things are happening in our life that we cannot explain. We are called to trust in impossible situations. We are called to trust when everything is going good for us. And to add a little humor, we're called to trust that our red light will finally turn green. <laughs> but in the situation where Jesus gives us that imperative to trust... It was just before the Passover feast, and, and we have walked through these events, and, and just six weeks ago during Holy Week, we were taking just a really close look at what exactly was going on on that evening and that week before Jesus went to the cross. Jesus and his disciples, they were, they were all together, and, and our Lord knew that he, the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He knew how it was going to happen. No one else did. The evening meal was being served. The devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus. Our Lord knew that the Father had put all things under his power. And the time had come for him to return to the Father. So he got up after that meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist poured some water in a bowl or a basin, and then he began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And as the evening went on, Jesus began to reveal what was about to happen. He spoke to his disciples concerning his betrayal. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me, Jesus said. And he told them this beforehand so that that when these events happened, or as they were happening, they would believe that he is in control, that he truly is the Christ, the Son of God, who has come to accomplish the forgiveness of their sins. As the news broke, as you could probably imagine, the Disciples were quite dismayed, to see the least. And immediately, the only thing they could think about is the identity of the betrayer and how to stop this from happening. And Jesus says, trust. After Judas left the others, Jesus went on to say, My children, I'm only going to be with you for a little while longer. You're going to look for me. Just as I told the Jews, so I will tell you now where I am going, you cannot come. He meant the cross of Calvary. It was then that Peter said to Jesus, I will lay down my life for you, to which Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. We remember that line, don't we? By this news, Peter and the rest, they were filled with fear. The one they called rabbi, this teacher whom they left their lives to follow, whom they trusted for the last three years, is now going to leave them. And then what? What do we do when Jesus feels so far away from us? calls us to trust. 
And that's hard. And in the gospel text, what makes this even worse is that one of the disciples, Jesus' closest friends, was going to betray him unto death. Even Peter, of that inner circle, Peter, James, and John, Peter is going to deny Jesus three times before the sun broke, before the rooster crowed the very next day. What was supposed to be a celebratory night was anything but. And Jesus called his disciples to trust. As their world was falling apart around them, that's exactly what Jesus is saying. He says, believe in God, believe also in me. But really what he's doing is is saying, trust, trust me. And as we encounter our gospel text this morning, it's important to see what's going on for, for what it really is. Our Lord, in the midst of all of this craziness, for lack of a better term, is calling his disciples, telling them, trust, trust, because I am going to prepare a place for you as I give my life as a ransom for many. Trust, because I'm coming back to call you, to take you where I am going. Trust, because you know the way. Trust, because even now, I am in complete control. Trust, that's what this passage is about. And it's one thing to trust in God when our world is upside down. It seems easier for us, perhaps, to to see his hand at work. I think in some ways this is absolutely true. Maybe it doesn't seem so at the time. But when we look back on those things, when, when we have been in uh, dire straits, in awkward positions, in, in, in just impossible situations where, where grief is all around and we're, we're locked into sorrow. As we look back on those times to see how God has delivered us through them, it's easy to trust. Jesus, take the wheel. Not that trust comes easy in those moments, but hindsight is 2020. It's another thing for us to trust God when our lives are going well. Especially when we remember that we would much rather rely on ourselves and our abilities than than someone else. Our own capacity. Trusting someone else becomes more difficult even when that someone else is God. Until it smacks us right in the face, undeniable. In the midst of all of this... As Jesus calls us to trust, the reality is that that trust is an integral part of our baptismal identity. As we've been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable. Jesus calls us to live as those who are purchased with a price, not gold or silver, but with, with blood, his blood and his body given and shed for us. God calls us not to chase after our own desires, but trust in His. Live and act for the benefit of our neighbor. And certainly God calls us to be peacemakers, even and especially when when others don't want to make peace with us. But in all of these things, God calls us to trust in him and his will for our lives. So where in your life is God calling you to trust him more? Are things going well and you need to do a gut check? Are things falling apart all around you? And you need to know God's presence. Where is God calling you to trust him? And what is standing in the way? 
you know, lack of trust is one of those things that we just confessed all with all of the rest of our sin just a few moments ago. And you need to know that, that your sins are forgiven, every single one of them. And as God calls us to, to trust, we're free to do just that in these moments. Certainly, and throughout our week as we will go back to the rest of our lives this afternoon. We're called to trust in God's grace, trust in his mercy, trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's true for us as individuals. It's also true for us as a congregation. But there's one more reality concerning trust that sticks out in our gospel lesson this morning, and it's there in verse 8. Philip speaks for the whole group here, not just himself. He says, Jesus, just show us the Father, and that'll be enough. Just show us the Father. You know, as we live and grow in Christ, we are called to be people who walk uh, by faith. And the reality is that we are better equipped and more comfortable walking by sight. It's nice to, to have something to look at. Now, Jesus responds to this request in our text by revealing to them that he himself is the one who shows us the very heart of God. You want to see the Father, you've got to look at Jesus. He's the one who reveals the grace and mercy, even compassion that God has for, for all of his creation as he comes to rescue us from, from bondage and slavery uh, to sin and death. Yes, absolutely. But, but even the hurts and the brokenness and, and all of the, the misgivings and, and bad decisions that we've made each and every step of the way. Jesus shows us the heart of God. Our Lord, it calls us to trust and believe his words. And in an ever-changing world, he then points us to his works, his person, and the place where his actions prove those words, those promises are delivered. And also delivered to us is the ability to trust through grace and mercy because we worship a changeless God in an ever-changing world. You know, there's a story about Lloyd Douglas. You ever heard of Lloyd Douglas? Okay. He uh, is the author of a book called The Robe, and he wrote some other novels, too. When he attended college, he lived in a boarding house and in that boarding house, there was a retired uh, wheelchair-bound music professor who lived on the first floor. Each morning, Douglas would stick his head in the door to that teacher's apartment and ask the same question, what's the good news? The old man would pick up his tuning fork, he'd tap it on the side of his wheelchair and say, that's middle C. It was middle C yesterday. It'll be middle C again tomorrow. It'll be middle C a thousand years from now. The tenor upstairs sings flat. <laughs> the piano across the hall is out of tune. But my friend, this is middle C, and that will never change. Friends in Christ, we need to know, especially today, but every day of our lives, that the God who ruled the world, who ruled the earth, who ruled all of creation last night, is the same one who rules it today. He has the same convictions. He has the same plan. He has the same mood. He has the same love for you. He never changes. This is the one who prepares a room for us in his father's mansion. This is the one who lives to wipe away every tear from our eyes. This is the one who brings comfort and stability 
to you and I in our, in our unstable, constantly changing lives. This is the God whom we call Lord. He is the God who calls us to put all of our faith and trust in him. As he points us to his actions, his death, sure, but even greater, his resurrection. The reality that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And in a world that is constantly changing, he never does. Now that's a cornerstone that we can always build on. A changeless God in an ever-changing world. And he's the one who brings us the peace that passes human understanding that guards our hearts and our minds in him until the day of his return. May God grant it. Amen. As we continue in our worship this morning, let's rise and confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess to one another, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We worship God with our tithes and our offerings. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you are a God who never changes. Your demeanor toward us is always one of grace and mercy, and you supply for our every need, even before we know to ask. And as we worship you with our tithes and our offerings, we ask that what we bring will be pleasing in your sight. Use them to accomplish your good and gracious will in the world in which we live. All to your glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, with the whole creation, we praise you for your gift of life and the world that sustains us in all the living. Grant that seeing your even greater gift of deliverance from the disfigurement of sin and the promise of the renewal of your original design, all people may come to repentance and faith in your gracious invitation. Through Jesus Christ, who is risen and victorious over death, Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> give power to your word as it's proclaimed boldly by your church, filled with the Holy Spirit and the faithful witness of all, as it's preached and taught by all who are ordained and commissioned by you, as well as those to whom you have given the gifts of, to be faithful witnesses of your salvation and your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Turn the hearts of all who bear the authority of government in our land and around the world that they would serve and lead all people in the way of justice, peace, and freedom. Lord, in your mercy. To all who suffer sickness or injury, give the comfort of your healing. To all who suffer persecution for standing for the truth of the Christian faith, give strength to endure. To all 
increased faith and faithfulness, believing that the risen Christ leads us to the glory of eternal life in your kingdom, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, for all of the faithful who have gone before us, the prophets, the apostles, the saints, the martyrs, for your servant, servant Stephen, we give you thanks and we ask that you would strengthen us to walk according to their example throughout all of our days to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the cornerstone, the sure foundation upon which the newborn chosen priestly people of his church have been built. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, sent your only begotten Son in our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by his all-availing sacrifice of body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive and renew. Strengthen us with your word and your spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Together. Uh, gather us, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all of the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all of them to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <clears throat>
Please be seated. Our uh, ushers will invite you forward.
Let us rise to sing the post-communion canticle. Thank the Lord. strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We close our worship this morning in song, The Church is One Foundation. Please be seated. Just a few things before we go forth this morning. Uh, if you haven't already picked them up, uh, here's the announcements. They're available out in the narthex by either door as you exit this morning. Uh, we have coffee and donuts next door, so don't exit too quickly. Uh, and we have um, our last Sunday school uh, today for the year. And I want to just recognize Vicki who has graciously been at work uh, throughout this year, and Mary Eddy, too. Is Mary here? She's in the next one. Okay. Uh, Vicki, uh, stand up. (laughs) 
Vicki dedicates a great deal of time and effort to custom making each Sunday school class for our preschoolers, and we're grateful to have you. Thank you, Vicki, for all of the hard work that you do. Um, do we have any slides this morning? Or just one? Let's see it. Camp Aloma has their 50th Burger Bash. That's coming up June 10th. Uh, it's, a, it's a month away, uh, but they want to get enough burgers for everybody. And so if you want to escape the heat and go up to a nice place in the woods and have some burgers and all of the uh, uh, stuff that comes along with burgers, uh, give, them a, uh, give them a call. Or actually, uh, check them out online. Uh, let them know you're coming, and that'll be a, a wonderful getaway for you that day. Also, too, it's the first uh, Sunday of the month, and I feel bad because sometimes I miss this, but, but Ryan is here, uh, and he'll be doing the, um, the blood pressures over in the, in the fellowship hall, so, so get your donut and your coffee, and then go get your blood pressure. Uh, so... So you can surprise your doctor tomorrow. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you again for joining us in worship. Have a great week in Christ. Go in peace. Serve the Lord with gladness. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.